So the president went on national TV last night, acting all tough. You know, I think he deserves an Oscar for his performance last night, by the way. He was tough. He, he came across as kind of commanding, as if you know, he's actually really uh, running things. And he even used the T word, and I was shocked. I thought the T word was uh, in the black book. I thought that was one of those words they no longer like to use. You know, the PC police will come after you for terrorist. He called the Islamic State, ISIL, whatever you want to call them, a terrorist organization. And that was kind of shocking and surprising because that's exactly what they are. They're a bunch of terrorists. They're a bunch of monsters. And they've killed a lot of innocent men, women, and children in the Middle East. A lot of them are Muslims that have been murdered. There have been Christians. There have been Jews and other groups that have had to flee for their very lives. They were lucky to escape the wrath of the Islamic State. Others, not so much. So it's good to see that we're actually you know, speaking out against the brutality that's been taking place over there in Syria and Iraq as they try to create their own caliphate. But I did have issue with the so-called strategy. Now, for one thing, I don't have a problem with them actually launching strikes against the Islamic State as long as we're actually hitting Islamic State targets, not weddings. You know, kind of like what happened in Afghanistan. Innocent people, let's try and avoid them if we can. I realize that sometimes that's unavoidable. But we need to do a better job when it comes to intelligence and actually taking out actual threats and targets. So hopefully we'll do better this time. And I think there's been 150 plus strikes already against ISIL or the Islamic State. Whatever you want to call it. Al-Qaeda. It's all the same thing to me. Now the big issue I have with the strategy is the fact that we are going to get involved in a Syrian civil war. Just like they were pushing for last year. Uh, you know, going after Assad, going after the Assad regime, even though Assad's not a good guy, he is nowhere near as bad as ISIL or the Islamic State. And the whole idea that the president has and Boner has, and I don't know where these guys come up with their brilliant ideas, to arm the Syrian opposition, that is insane for two reasons. First off, it's a civil war. Civil wars are internal matters. We should stay out of it. The same thing would go if we were involved in a future civil war here. Other nations should stay the fuck out of our civil war. Canada shouldn't get involved in our civil war. You know, Russia shouldn't get involved. China shouldn't get involved. It's a civil war. Same thing goes with what's happening in Syria. Second, most of the opposition is either affiliated with the Islamic State or at the very least, are fighting alongside the Islamic State, probably under a different name, but that's come out time and time again, and that's something I've known for the past two years now. And most people that have you know basic knowledge of the situation in Syria understand that. So why does the president, who has all these advisors, all these officers, all these generals, all these intelligence people, not get that arming Syrian opposition is probably going to only help, not hinder, the Islamic State. It's a very bad idea, and I think that Obama, I don't know what the hell he's thinking, I don't know what the hell Boner's thinking, or there are a lot of them, but this is not good strategy. Yes, you know, hit them with bombs, hit them with missiles, and help the Kurds, help the Iraqi military, help the other military forces in the Middle East that oppose the Islamic State. But why are we focusing on Syria? Why are we focusing on Assad? The reality here is we cannot trust the so-called rebels in Syria. We cannot trust the Syrian opposition. We should not be giving them aid. We should not be giving them weapons. We should not be giving them money because the fear is that they're most likely going to use it in aid with the Islamic State against us. Not just Syria, but against Iraq and against other neighboring Middle Eastern countries as well as possibly the West as well. Now, the President said America is safer. Well, that is BS, Mr. President. The border is wide open. Now, I personally don't have a problem, Mr. President, with people wanting to come to this country, yearning to be free for a new life for themselves if they go through the proper steps to become citizens. And maybe that path to citizenship that we have needs to be tweaked, needs to be worked on. But I am completely against outright amnesty because a lot of the individuals that have come over the border aren't exactly good folks. They're criminals. They're murderers. And they probably have a list 
of crimes that they committed back in their home countries that are a mile long, and we should kick those guys out of the country. Now, everyone else, perhaps we can give them visas or probationary citizenships or something just to make sure that they're not the you know bad apples because we want the good apples but we don't want the bad ones we don't want the criminal element we have enough criminals here and most of them unfortunately are up in dc anyways that's off topic the point is we're not safer but hey you know we're getting spied on by the police state by the big brother more people are being harassed and intimidated by the militarization of police not all cops are bad by the way but it does seem like that's the way that they're going unfortunately i wish that wasn't the case but i think something serious is going to have to happen in order to uh, change the current attitude that law enforcement has when it comes to police and citizens. They're supposed to protect us. They're supposed to serve us, not, you know, put a boot on us. You know, it's something that needs to be worked out and resolved before the matter gets a lot worse than it already is. Anyways, another issue of the president's speech was very anti-Russian. Now, I don't like what's going on in the Ukraine, but at the same time, once again, that's between Ukraine and Russia. That's their issue. That's between those two nations. So, once again, we should stay out of that issue entirely. And action equals reaction. The West and NATO does things to piss off the Russians. The Russians and the Chinese do things to piss us off. It's a never-ending cycle that needs to stop before we end up with World War III, which is another big reason why we don't need to be aiding the Syrian opposition. We don't need to have them included in our strategy to wipe out ISIS, especially since that's going to be considered an act of war against the Assad regime. And, of course, if we're launching planes into Syria, bombing Syrian cities, killing Syrian citizens, that's not going to look good either. Not to mention the fact that Assad does have friends in Iran and Russia. In the long run, I fear that this so-called strategy by the administration is going to make things in the Middle East even worse. Yes, we're going to kill some ISIS goons. Some of those monsters are going to be wiped out. But I think it's going to add further destabilization and possibly lead to a potential global conflict. The only other part about Obama's strategy that I would agree with is having a coalition, especially when it comes to Middle Eastern countries. And unfortunately for Mr. President, that does include Syria. That does include Iran. That does include Turkey. That includes Jordan, Pakistan, and all the other nations that are in that region. They're the ones in the end are, that are going to have to do something about ISIS, the terrorists over there, the Muslim extremists. They're the ones that are going to have to decide enough is enough, and they're going to have to get their troops. They're going to have to coordinate. They're going to have to come up with some sort of strategy and wipe them out. My advice would be for us to stay the hell out of it. I'm not saying we should become best friends with Syria and Iran, but my point is perhaps, just perhaps, we should leave Assad alone. Look at what happened in Libya with Gaddafi. He wasn't a good guy either, but he was way better for that country than what they have now. But like I said, the strategy that they're going to implement, I fear, is only going to make things far worse than they currently are in the long run. And unfortunately, the administration and our government no longer listens to we the people.